tell me about when you started cooking. I was a super picky eater as a kid and I think it's because I was raised in a family of bakers and I learned early on how much I loved cookie dough and cupcakes and baked goods in general and I refused to eat like normal food, normal food yeah. vegetables, dinner. I became obsessed with baked goods at a very early age because it was sort of in my blood. My grandmother's baked, my mother baked. What were their specialties? You know, it was all very down home baked goods. My mother baked gooey butter cake, which actually originated in St. Louis. She's not from St. Louis, she's from Ohio. She's a good Midwest girl. Apple dumplings were really big in my family. My grandfather was raised on an apple orchard, and so it was really just about finding ways to use every last bit of apples. Um, one of my grandmothers always used to make chocolate chip cookies and she'd fold Rice Krispies into them for like a little like pop snap surprise. Were there experimenters in your family? I mean you mentioned the Rice Krispies, but you know you're known for you know, throwing interesting <laughs> things into baked goods. Was there somebody who did that and made you think like, oh it's okay to break the rules a little bit? You know, I think because I spent so much time with my grandmothers in the kitchen as a kid, they were, you know, depression era people. Yeah. So it was very much of like a waste not what not mentality. I obviously loved that part of it because it tapped into my creative personality, but it was certainly inspired with a very sort of down home starting point more so than the creativity of the final product. But sometimes you would happen upon something. Great. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, throwing a bag of stale cereal into a cookie, like cookie batter mixing is, is certainly something that we used to do when I was a kid, but it was less because it was like, yay, let's add cereal and more like, this, oh, yeah, no yeah, one's going to eat yeah. the cereal for breakfast anymore and we're not throwing it away, right. but we're definitely going to hide it in a cookie. And when did you start to make stuff yourself where you started to think that you could have this as a career path? I went to college and did th that whole sort of like song and dance to appease my parents, but I really became obsessed with baking. I would bake like two or three or four things a day. I'd stay up, you know, I'd do, I'd go to class, I'd do all my homework, and then I'd stay up late at night baking. And it became this very like therapeutic thing. It became just part of my daily routine. And once I was finishing up college, I really started to freak out and I was like, I don't want a real job. I want to like defy all odds. I want to I want a place where I can be creative. And to be honest, like I want to stay up in the middle of the night every night for the rest of my life mixing cookies. And, like, and you got to be careful. Cereal. Yeah, you got to be careful what you wish for because I <laughs> I have just that. I love it. So what are we making today? We're going to do definitely a throwback kind of yeah, cookie. Yeah, you know, today I really wanted to make something that was an homage to where I got my start. And I really feel like I, I worked in New York City kitchens and I worked for really great chefs, but for me I got my start baking alongside my grandmother's. So we're gonna make my grandmother's oatmeal cookie recipe. And I have to say that her oatmeal cookie recipe is super simple. For me, it tastes like home, it tastes like her. I could be mixing a batch of these oatmeal cookies next to her, and my cookie never tastes as good as her cookie. And for me, that is part of my creative process too. We're at Milk Bar, we will never make just an oatmeal cookie, really and truly because for me, I'm only ever gonna make like the second best oatmeal cookie at best. My best is gonna be second best. So recipe. we're gonna try. We're gonna, we're gonna try. try. <laughs> I'll, I'm gonna put a little twist on it, which is what I like to do because I know I could never just to. make her cookie recipe straight up here. Good, will you show us the steps yes. to yours slash your grandmother's? Yes, <laughs> let's go into the kitchen. So to get started making my grandma's famous oatmeal cookies, I start with unsalted European style butter. It's one stick plus six tablespoons. And then I add my sugars. All good cookies start by creaming butter and sugars. I have a half a cup of granulated sugar and three quarters cup light brown sugar. And I get the one stick plus six tablespoons of butter, half a cup of regular sugar, three quarters cup of light brown sugar, creaming in a stand mixer. I give the butter a second to paddle together before I really turn up the speed on my mixer. When you're creaming butter and sugars, you're really looking for a light, fluffy mixture. So once my butter and my sugar start to come together, I add two large eggs and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. And then the mixer goes back up on high to cream, to finish creaming for another two or three minutes and we're gonna get a really nice, light, fluffy butter, sugar, egg, vanilla extract mixture. 
So when the creaming has finally got to that really nice, light, fluffy stage, I scrape down the sides of the mixing bowl, and then it's time for the dry ingredients. Super simple. Two cups of all-purpose flour, two cups of old-fashioned rolled oats. I add three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. For me, all good cookie recipes have just the right balance of salt, and my grandma's oatmeal cookie certainly follows suit. Ground cinnamon, a little bit of cinnamon in an oatmeal cookie really sort of brings out the hominess. One teaspoon, and then one teaspoon of baking soda for flavor, for rise, and for a nice little crisp. That's my grandma's oatmeal cookie recipe. But when I make this recipe at home, I like to sneak a little bit of shredded coconut into the mix because I think it adds just a really nice, interesting, hearty but sweet dimension to a standard oatmeal cookie. I add a quarter cup of that shredded coconut with the rest of my dry ingredients. And then I paddle these items together. The secret when paddling together the dry ingredients into any cookie recipe is to not over mix. You really just need 45 seconds to a minute to mix the dry ingredients together. And then I scoop my dough. Now, the cookies are not done at this point. One of my grandma's secret tricks to her oatmeal cookie recipe is to take these balls and to roll them in confectioner's sugar. The confectioner's sugar in the baking process provides a really cool sort of crackle coating. So we're gonna take these suckers to a 350 degree oven and bake them for eight to 10 minutes. All right, so these are the cookies, hot out of the oven, crispy on the outside, a little fudgy in the center. That, for me, is the sign of a perfectly baked cookie. The confectioner sugar has done this beautiful thing of crackling, just like my grandma's oatmeal cookie.